This is the camera I use to film rec radio. <laughs> this is disgusting. And this is Jess Paul. Hi actors who have never heard of me before, as well as my regular audience who clicked on this only out of the kindest interest in my life. Not only do I hope to entertain all of the above, but this tutorial actually can translate to any job that requires a portfolio. A portfolio that you do not have. I've been talking to a lot, a lot of people on Facebook who are trying to break into acting. The first thing I ever ask them is to send me their reel. I would say about 90% of the people respond by never talking to me again, or by saying that their reel is currently being made with the very, very common statement of, I'm waiting to hear back from a couple of projects. Even if some of those better projects do finish and you do get a copy of it down the line, it's probably a lot farther into the future than you were expecting. And you will be submitting to and auditioning for a lot of projects in a long span of time without any footage or reel to show for yourself. So why am I so adamant about you having a reel as soon as possible? I've had the privilege, as a lot of you know, of sitting on the other side of the casting table for a lot of my shorts and feature films. And now I have a much better understanding of why a reel is the single-handedly most important part of your acting materials. Did you know that anybody can buy really nice headshots and make a website calling themselves an actor? People can even pad out their resume with questionable titles that nobody's ever heard of i.e. the first one-fourth of my entire resume. But the truest indicator of good castable talent will come exclusively from a reel before you get into the audition room. And for many of my independent projects, I didn't even let anybody in the audition room without a reel. The truth is, casting directors just want to see you on camera. They want to hear your voice, your accent, see how you move, express emotions, what looks you can realistically pull off, what characters you can realistically play. This whole fake real process can be more subtle and simple than you even think. You just have to do the best you can with what you have to get it done and get your performance on tape. So let's make a reel! Pro tip, I came outside to do this scene to give a little bit of variety in my locations, but if you are going to, make sure you're in a nicely lit area, a shaded area, so that you're not under direct sunlight. That looks awful on anybody. And if it's very noisy outside, it might be a problem in post. So make sure that you're not around a highway like I am and probably will be editing out in, in the final product. I swear to God, it's like being Dee Dee for three of your dumbest sorority sisters who insist on getting wrecked on apple juice and watching Frozen four times in one weekend. Four times, heck. So I thought this episode would be a great opportunity to actually show you what my setup looks like when I'm filming my show. And if you haven't caught on yet, I'm basically showing you how to make the smallest, simplest movie possible. Because the point of all of this fake real stuff is just to get you on camera using the best or only resources that you have. And believe me, I am very sympathetic to that person that doesn't want to drop hundreds or thousands of dollars on kind of a new venture that they're going into that they're not really even sure about. Believe me, I definitely did a lot of that DIYing with Rec Radio. I had two college dorm lamps, a piece of material from the craft store, free editing software that came with my computer, and this. Anybody remember this? Yeah. Yeah. I bought the cheap point and shoot that all the YouTubers were trying to sell me in 2009. Mm-hmm. Ugh. Oh, that advertisement using the product doesn't even look good. I do not recommend buying this now, but the point is it worked for me at the time and I filmed all of Rec Radio. With this. Now let's shoot something! Welcome to my camera setup! It's quite simple. Uh, what we're looking at here is a collection of equipment that I've gathered over the years. Here is my Canon DSLR. It is a Rebel T3i, which is an eight or nine year old camera body. I bought it off of eBay, I believe, or Amazon, because I just basically wanted a body, and then I was gonna spend a little bit more money on my lenses. My lenses that I have, the 17 through 50 millimeter zoom lens, which is a wide, it's really easy to set up into zoom. Um, the one we're looking at now is my 24 millimeter at 1.4 F. This one is what I use for all my cinematic scenes today. I also have a 50 millimeter close up 
We are also looking at my DIY ring light. As you see all the YouTubers, they have their ring lights. I actually like this better. I had a ring light back in Pittsburgh and left it there because it was too big and clunky and honestly was too bright and washed me out and I couldn't control the light. This you can with a dimmer as well as position it any way that you want. This is my lighting setup. I have had the stands and the lights themselves since Wrecked Radio, and I recently bought these China balls because they really diffuse light just easily and very quickly. I bought nylon ones because when my friends used to use paper ones, they catch on fire sometimes, so. And I set them up evenly on both of my sides, so it is a nice, even capture. We're not worrying too much about dramatic lighting. If you'd like to light your cinematic reel clips with dramatic lighting, that would be one source on one side that's brighter than the other to make kind of a shadowy lighting setup. We're also looking at my Rode mic, which is a directional mic that I use to get my voice. I will be listing all of my equipment as well as links to them and prices down below so you can really see how much my setup costs. Again, I bought these things over time as I needed them, as I was investing more and more into my career and you can pick and choose what you want right now and just understand a little bit about what you're going to need possibly in the future. And so you asked Jessica, where do I actually get the material that I can perform? I was wondering this myself. This is the first time I'm actually making a fake reel because I already had a reel from Wrecked Radio before I ever started auditioning. So all the clips I ever used were from my YouTube show and that's how I got my actual jobs. So I was asking around my LA actor friends to see if they ever heard of somebody taking a known monologue or a dialogue from an existing movie. And as far as I know, it's pretty frowned upon. The more popular it is because it's recognizable, they wanna see you in something fresh, something that you own. So either borrowing a piece of material that's a little more obscure or asking a writer friend if you can't write yourself for a piece of material that you can possibly use in monologue or dialogue. I am a writer, so I will be writing all of the content that you watch in my fake reel. I will post it on the internet. I'm making this video to prove that a reel can be done by practically a one person crew. But if you haven't used a camera, if you're not used to lighting setups, and if you do not have some of the skills like writing and editing on your side, reach out to your filmmaking community and see if anybody is willing to help. There are now companies that do charge to help create a reel for you. If that's something you wanna do, if that's something that you have the money for, I, I don't really know that much about them. What I do know is that if you have a few resources, you can do this yourself. I am all for doing things myself and figuring things out myself, even when I am not good at it. One thing to remember is that you can perform costume and makeup, the characters that you're going to want to pursue most after your reel is all done. If you want to audition most for edgier or darker characters, make sure that those are well represented in your reel. And if you want to create some more lighthearted, more clean cut characters for commercial purposes, make sure that's in your reel as well, because casting directors are going to get a first impression of your type and what you can realistically be cast as. If you're so early in the game that you're not quite sure what kind of characters you're gonna wanna play, film a bunch of these different kinds and different genres and different character types. It's 2019. You can upload as many videos as you want for free onto the internet, then as you are submitting to a specific project with a specific type of character, you can link individual clips that you've uploaded instead of your one big reel that has a mess and a mix of all kinds of characters. When you're auditioning for a project, you want that director to see you in that role as easily as possible to be able to visualize you in the film. So having a mix of different types of scenes and characters is great, as long as you're able to sometimes specify when you're submitting to each project. You can see a lot more tips on this subject from my videos, how I won 18 laurels on my first film, and can a YouTuber be a good actor, or whatever I called it. This is April, she's going to be helping me today on the dialogue scene. You might remember her from This is a Garden that I've been posting about everywhere. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> we're going to go into a, a little bit of a more complicated setup because we're going to do a three shot scene. If you want to go advanced, uh, just follow our lead. I want to look that teller straight in the face and say, yes, I would like that in my checking place. 
but what if my video sucks? Let me explain something. If you've even attempted any kind of even lighting and camera setup and your footage still looks like shit, I won't lie and tell you that a better setup won't make a difference. Even my equipment and skill set could use some major attention and I could always get better. 1.4. Stop! I don't remember what any- this is how little I actually know about my cameras. But if you're truly and fully lacking the resources for a self-tape setup, that means that your great performance hopefully shines through. Which brings us to the next question. What if I suck? If you happen to be the aspect of this that sucks, which is a possibility, and you're scared that you won't get roles because your sucky performance will be preserved and presented in video form, let's look at this logically. If you never made a fake reel to show how much you suck, there's still a possibility where they could invite you to a live audition. And when you get there, you'll just suck in person. So no matter what level you're at, making a fake reel may still save everybody time. <laughs> And even though what I said is completely true, I was trying to put a lighthearted spin on a very, very constant truth that we all start out worse than we will eventually become. If you go and you watch the earliest episode of Wrecked Radio that you can find on this channel, don't do it. You might cringe so hard that your frown falls off your face. But I had to start somewhere. And I'm not only talking about performing and producing, but also putting myself out there, getting critical feedback from fans, friends, strangers, and drum roll please, myself. The fake reel that you might make will be far from the best performances that you'll ever have. But it will give you a starting point of developing your own skills and talents, as well as taking control of your own brand and your career. I know not everybody is a producer, a writer, or wants to be known as a jack of all trades. But I will never discourage somebody who decides they want to try taking about two steps above their current level to see what they truly can do. And this goes beyond acting, people! If you're watching this as a beginner graphic designer, make your own magazine layouts and logos and ads to make a portfolio. If you went to school to be an architect but don't have the portfolio of an architect, make smaller projects or models to show employers who might want to hire you for something that actually exists. Anyone could have watched this video, absorbed all of my information, and then just played through to watch hours of gameplay or makeup tutorials. Or you could open up that Word document, just like I did for this video, write down all the kinds of scenes that you want to perform in, and actually make your reel. Which one are you? Now it's time to spin the wheel! How about this back? Ow! Ow! Don't put your finger there, Jessica, on the screws. How do you like my background? Probably the cutest one that um I've ever seen with Oh, that's, those are my colors, man. And it's adulting! Because I'm an adult now. I'm an adult who makes my own reels in my portfolios. I hope you got something out of this video, even if you aren't one of the random actors that clicked on this video and you're just my regular audience. I love you for always watching my stuff. Thanks for all the likes, all the comments, and the subs. I truly appreciate it. You have no idea. All YouTubers do. It'd be weird if, like, a YouTuber didn't like when somebody liked their stuff. Interesting. I'll talk to you later, guys. Have a great day.